updates on your opinion on abortion. Um, I personally don't think that like I could have an abortion just because morally I feel like for myself it wouldn't be the right choice. Um, but how do you defend your opinion as a white, well-off, religious man? Um, how do you defend your, ha like, telling a woman what she can do with because her body? Because evil things are still evil, to... even if I'm a white, well-off, religious man. And good things are still good, even if I'm a white, well-off, religious man. So the, I mean, to, the, this is, the, this is, this is one of these, this is one of these identity politics points that I really, uh, I mean, I, I don't mean to come down harshly on you, I don't, uh, but it, it, it is a point that I really have serious moral qualms with. I, I think it's quite, quite terrible. The reason being that the people who were fighting against s enslavement of black people were a bunch of well-off white men for the most part, right? And those people were saying, this is a moral sin. This is a moral blot. They weren't living in the South. They didn't own plantations. They didn't live the lives of the plantation owners. They said, this is evil and we are here to stop it. Right, when you see something that you think is morally wrong happening, especially when you're talking about the taking of a human life, like listen, I think, that, uh, I think that you shouldn't go around randomly killing homeless people. I just have this view. I'm not a homeless person. Most of the people who randomly kill homeless people are probably not of my economic strata, my religious view, or my, uh, uh, I don't know whether they're of my skin color or not. I have no idea what the, what the actual sociological breakdown of homeless killer serial murderers is. But, uh, but I would suggest that my identity has nothing to do with what is right or wrong. And this is what Western civilization used to be about. Western civilization used to be about the idea that, yes, I'm not a woman in the healthcare field, but you and I can have a conversation about what's right and wrong because this is the nature of human reason. The nature of human reason, the nature of right and wrong, is that you and I can talk about what's right and wrong and that I don't retreat into my identity. If we can all retreat into our identity and our morality is now centered around that identity, morality doesn't exist at all. We break down into a society of fragmented atoms where I can't even say, like, you're torturing a puppy in your backyard. I have nothing to say about that. I'm not a white woman who's in the healthcare field. I'm not going to do that. I don't, I don't, I, I refuse to surrender the idea that I can have a moral stance on issues that are of concern to society and of concern to the, to the well-being of the United States simply because of the color of my skin or the nature of my genitalia. And honestly, I believe any view that feels differently is sexist, racist, and bigoted. Let's see how you can claim that everyone is treating equally and no one is victimized on a systemic level when you have laws that punish uh, one race that is more likely to use one type of drug more than another race when it's actually been shown that among kids our age, uh, white people and suburban kids are more likely to use drugs in schools than black inner city kids. Okay, so uh, there, there's a lot there and you're right, we disagree on everything. So, um, <laughs> so to begin with, uh, I don't believe in the concept of mass incarceration because that implies that the police are going into black communities with lasso, rounding people up and taking them to jail for no reason. I don't think that's happening. Every person who is in jail has had a trial or a plea. The idea that people are just being grabbed and thrown into prison to keep alive some sort of prison industrial complex where the, the prison masters are the ones running the system, I don't see evidence of that. As far as the 1986 law, I think that it's important to put this into context. And the context is that, that law was originally pressed by black legislators from inner cities who are sick of watching crack cocaine destroying their communities. And the reason for the disparity is because crack was more easily distributable and significantly more effective than powder cocaine. It is also the fact that the vast majority of people who are distributing and using crack cocaine were black. You know it's a drug that the vast majority of people who distribute and use are white? Crystal meth. Guess what the penalty is for one ounce of crystal meth versus one ounce of crack cocaine? They are identical. They are identical because they are easily distributed and they are distributed in similar forms. So the idea that this was just some sort of attempt to grab black people off the street and throw them in jail for no reason so we could have a permanent underclass of people with no fathers, this seems to me like a giant conspiracy theory with little evidence to support it. As far as the idea that, that these communities would be better if we just release people onto the streets, so I think it's important, again, to note the statistics here. The fact is the vast, 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 vast majority of people who are, in who are in jail for drug crimes are in for distribution, not merely for use. The idea that it's a black kid who's just smoking crack on the street who's getting picked up by the cops and thrown in jail, the justice system doesn't have time for that. Okay, the vast majority of even possessions that are, pl are pled down from distribution. Now, I've said earlier I'm not in favor of the drug war. Okay, but I can tell you something. The people who are currently acting in criminal fashion in the drug war aren't going to be out acting as model citizens as a general rule. A lot of those people are going to be committing other crimes because this has been the history of the United States. When you make a substance illegal, the people who are criminals were criminals before and they're criminals after. Al Capone was not going to turn into a banker after prohibition ended. <laughs> and the same thing is true for a lot of the people who are committing criminal acts by distributing illicit substances. So I think that to pretend that the epidemic of single motherhood is going to end, all these guys are just gonna decide, you know what, I've decided to marry that girl, I'm gonna stay home and it's gonna be a leave it to beaver. When they were dealing crack on the corner to 12-year-old kids the day before, I think that's a little bit of a myth.
how would you explain the amount of black people in jail currently? Higher numbers of black people committing crimes. Well, that's not the case. That's it is absolutely the case. Uh, there's, it's been statistically shown that white people use drugs just as much as And black as people. I said, people are generally not arrested for using drugs, they're generally arrested for drug distribution in the drug so war. Do white people not distribute drugs? Well, they don't in terms of proportionality with regard to, I mean, the, the, the idea that, again, the, the, you need to show me the statistics on drug distribution. So uh, the, the burden is on you to prove the disparity, not on me to prove the non-disparity. Uh, hello, Mr. Shapiro. Um, you have consistently praised the free market as the most effective means by which to combat racism, sexism, et cetera, correct? Yes. Right? Uh, you believe legislation prohibiting such behaviors is essentially unneeded in today's day and age because you have faith that people such as yourself are conscious enough to fight discrimination in business where it can be shown, and at the end of the day, a business should be given immense freedom to conduct itself in the pursuit of profit. My question is as follows. If insurance companies can charge young males as a group higher prices for car insurance than young females, because the former has statistically been shown to be more reckless drivers, does this not leave open the possibility in a free market system for insurance companies to charge premiums based on certain ethnic or racial categories if these ethnic or racial categories statistically correlate with more reckless driving? If you object to the notion of charging someone more based on a factor that that person has virtually no agency in choosing, such as race or sex, why do you not condemn the fact that young men have to pay more? If you do not object to the possibility that a person of a certain sex, ethnic, or racial group may have to pay more on that basis, then are you not failing to disavow discriminatory business practice? Okay, so uh, that's a long paragraph, but I think what it really boils down to, the answer is that what you're taught, you're now conflating ethnic uh, racism with risk factors. Okay, right. I don't conflate racism with risk factors, meaning if you are saying that, that insurance companies may use being black as a proxy for heart disease, for example, because black men suffer from heart disease at a higher rate, than white men do of the same age once you hit a certain age, uh, then my answer is that an insurance company is in the business of assessing risk, not in the business of assessing racism. So if they look at you and they say that this is a higher risk factor, I mean, another case, sickle cell anemia, right? There are certain diseases that actually do afflict races differently. Tay-Sachs affects Jews differently. Uh, so the answer is you're an insurance company. Of course you're going to charge more to somebody who has a higher risk factor. That's not racism. That's just the profit motive. I'm not saying that everyone's going to get charged the same in an insurance scheme. Of course not. I assume that you and I won't be charged the same. They'll, they'll me I'm older than you, presumably. They'll measure our bodily health. I don't know how much pot you smoke. Like, they'll make a bunch of distinctions, you know, and they'll, they'll make a bunch of decisions as to what our risk factors are and how that measures out in terms of what I need to pay in order to cover my projections. But that has nothing to do with, with quote-unquote discrimination. That's just a basic market decision. Right. That's so, actuarial decision. So that's just actuarial for clarification, decision so there was a study in which, uh, I, I forgot what organization of the United States federal government did it, but Native Americans in Arizona were found to have, you know, um, to essentially be engaged in fatal car crashes at a higher rate than any other group. Okay. You think it's perfectly permissible for insurance companies to charge someone um, a surplus, I mean, just charge someone an extra premium by virtue of the fact that they are Native American in Arizona? No, I think it's fair for an insurance company to charge someone based on the risk factor of driving. So what I would suggest is that in a free market system, this is why I defend a free market system, let's say there was an insurance company who did what you're talking about. Right. right? And the insurance company decided Native Americans get charged more. Okay. There would be another insurance company that would come along and they would say, okay, is it really true that Native Americans universally are being charged more or can I undercut my competitor by looking at people on an individual level and looking at all of their risk factors apart from race? Because race is not inherently right, linked that to drunk driving. Happen with males. Because, for instance, not all males, you know, are going to be in and of it themselves like more reckless drivers than females. However, uh, like as you said, neither is that the case for But this is why, I mean, race, let's be right? real about this. This is why car insurance companies have good driver discounts, for example. They have good student discounts, right? They actually do look at more than you just, like my insurance rates went up through the ceiling when I got caught going down the I-5 at 1.13 and had my license suspended for a month. They've gone right. down since because okay. I haven't had a ticket for five years. So, you know, th this is, <laughs> so okay. th the point that I'm making is that if you are suggesting that, if you're trying to line up discrimination with market-based profit, if your question is, is that, can you imagine a situation in which a business makes more money by discriminating and would that be okay, then the answer would be it's a, free, it's a business, you can do what you want in a free society and I have no right to use your services. However, it has yet to come to my attention that racial discrimination in a business is an actual profitable thing over time in a free market system where people can compete because race is not inherently connected to behavioral categories, right? The basis of racism is that race is connected to behavior.